Um, so yeah, thanks Modern Day Debates for having me back and thanks Amy and Alex for being here. Uh, so I think all of us are showing up here because we care about the well-being of children and we want, as medicine provides, the best possible outcomes for the children who are the subject of today's debate. An argument against puberty blockers is an argument against modern medicine and an argument that puts the well-being of far more children at risk than it saves. So I want to start with a hypothetical to contextualize uh, what's going on here. Imagine that you are a parent and you have a child. That child is suffering and you bring them to a professional in an area and the area of concern to see what can be done. The professional suggests a treatment with no more risks than any other aspect of modern medicine, a treatment that is by and large reversible. And then the state steps in and says, no, actually, despite the fact that the science is saying this is safe, and provides good outcomes, despite the fact that this diagnosis was made by a professional with your child's best interests in mind, we have decided to stop this form of treatment altogether. Whether your child was getting hormone blockers or ADHD meds or any other kind of medication, any reasonable parent would be outraged that the state was interfering with the well-being of, the chi of their child against the best medical science. Now I'm hoping to dispel some common misconceptions before diving into the data on this topic. Hopefully my interlocutor is here in good faith and isn't trying to bring up hyperbolic straw men of what trans activists are advocating for. Uh, so firstly, when we're talking about access of hormone blockers for trans minors, it's important to know that what's not happening here is experimentation. Lupron or Luprolide, the most commonly used hormone blocker, is a drug that has been used for many decades to treat various forms of cancer relating to sex characteristics, as well as a drug to prevent precocious puberty in cisgender minors. Notice we aren't here to debate access to this medicine for cis people or banning it generally. We're debating whether or not trans kids should have access to this medicine. In trans minors, providers typically aim to start Lupron around yeah. 10 or stage 2 or 3 of puberty for best results. However, the average age at which providers are giving this medicine is closer to 13, and is, this is considered to be a reversible treatment. While the medical you're interventions can take yard. place as young as age 9, that sort of situation is incredibly rare and a diagnosis only to be made by a professional with the consent of a parent. More likely interventions at that age would be allowing the child to explore their gender expression through clothes, hair, and toys. However, like with all medicine, there are possible side effects that exist, which are well known and how to mitigate those side effects are also well known. The most significant of these is bone mineral density. This appears only to present a significant issue after two years of use, after which transferring to completely or concurrently using cross-sex hormones or the cessation of use restores bone mineral density to healthy levels and peak hey, bone real mass. Quick, real quick, we're bone density, just stop you there. We're still not live, Amy. It definitely looks live. Um, oh. Yeah, it's definitely live. It is? Why yeah. is it not working? Uh, I'm just going to... Is it, is it, yeah, sorry, is it a different link? What, 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 did it Did it go... Sorry, I, I can't find... I can't watch it. I'm trying to watch the debate. Okay, sorry, go ahead. You're, I don't, it's not working on my end. Uh, we can't yeah. hear you either, Amy. We can't hear you, Amy. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes. Um, it looks like it's going live. I yeah, see. Everyone I in the chat. Alex is wrong. Modern James just put it in the chat. You're wrong, and we're live. Okay. 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 Sorry. Going. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know why I can't see it. All okay. Right. So, uh, right. So I'm gonna say the point I was just making again. This only yes. appears to present a significant issue after two years of use. That's the issue with bone mineral density. After which, transferring completely to or concurrently using cross-sex hormones or the cessation of use if they decide that they don't want to go on with hormone replacement therapy, restores bone mineral density to healthy levels, and peak bone mass appears to be normal. Hormone blockers are very rarely have any impact on fertility, yet even if they did, we know that that would be a dishonest approach to critique that because countless things impact fertility. And I'm assuming that Alex wouldn't debate whether or not children with cancer should have access to chemo because of a potential risk to infertility. Uh, when it comes to fears of misdiagnosis, that is a fear that the child will one day feel as though they were mistaken and that puberty suppression wasn't right for them. The evidence seems to suggest that this is an extremely unlikely outcome. In a 2015 survey of 27,000 transgender people from across the U.S., 8% reported that they had detransitioned at some point in their life. Of that 8%, 60% reported that at the time of the survey, they were currently living as a gender other than the one assigned at birth, suggesting they retransitioned. Um, uh, the reasons were many, but almost universally had to do with outside pressures, be it a spouse, their family, their place of work, or outright harassment. 
the representative number of the total sample that reported transitioning because it wasn't right for them was 0.4% of that 27,000. If we are being overly charitable here, there's another study that reports a 2.2% regret rate. But if we're going to start banning access to healthcare over less than 3% regret rate, you're going to abolish modern medicine as we know it. Just to drive this home, uh, here are some commonplace medical procedures with a higher regret rates than that. Of men who received a robotic prostatectomy due to prostate cancer, uh, reportedly that has a regret excuse me, reportedly that has a regret rate of 19%, and that's a hell of a lot less reversible than puberty blockers. Patient satisfaction with knee replacement surgeries ranges from uh, as low as 75 to 92 percent in the academic literature. The expectation that you can employ medicine without some bad outcomes is just unrealistic. Now, don't mistake my use of statistics as a dismissal for the pain that those individuals who do regret might experience. There aren't enough resources out there to help those who genuinely regret transition. But my issue is with the notion that we should ban a specific form of healthcare from all minors over the possibility that they could regret. By banning access to this care uh, over the chance that 0.4% will regret, you're creating a scenario where 99.6% of the rest of this population will have significantly worse outcomes. It's laughably twisted that there is so much empathy for this small minority of kids who might potentially regret this 0.4%. The idea that they could go through the wrong puberty, there's so much empathy for that. But when it comes to trans kids, who are gonna be forced to go through the wrong puberty because they're denied access to medicine. There is no empathy for those kids. And that is the vast, vast majority of those kids. Medicine is all about the odds. There's never going to be a way to guarantee that a procedure will have a 0% regret rate. But thankfully, due to statistical analysis and ever improving diagnostic technologies, we have people living longer, healthier lives than ever before. Doctors go to years of school and take insanely difficult tests and are gradually given more and more permissions in the field to ensure that we are giving patients the best care possible. Seeing as the evidence suggests this treatment is valid and a safe way to prepare kids for the possibility of transition, the only critique my interlocutor could be making is that he is more of an expert than the entirety of the medical community or that he takes an issue with modern medicine as a whole. If you want to object to children accessing the interventions with the best statistical outcomes, that's your prerogative. I'm not telling you what to do, but let's not sit here and pretend that you are protecting children or following the science. Again, denying trans people access to this healthier is an outright rejection of the best medical science. It's an act that causes demonstrable harm to significantly more individuals than I could ever hope to be saving. So I hope, like I said at the beginning, that Alex, the viewers, Amy, and modern day debates are here to fight for the best outcomes for children. Thank you. Wow, that was beautiful. Is, that, is it my turn to go? Yeah. Thank you so very much. Uh, Arden, and for those of you listening, if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. We may join Juicy Debates. Coming up, Fat Wednesday, Chubb, Logic, and Rob debating whether conservatives persecute or leftists for socialist media, and you don't want to miss it. And with that, we're going to be handing it over to you, Alex, for your opening statement. I just want to say, man, excuse me, that was awesome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was a very passionate speech, Arden. You really... Blew my socks off, and I'm not saying that facetiously. I can tell that you're passionate about this, and so I don't want to sound insensitive to what you're saying. I want to be very, very, very sensitive because I understand that uh, trans people should have the right to transition. I'm not against the ability or wanting people to transition. What I'm against is giving children uh, irreversible puberty blockers. And I know that multiple times you said reversible, reversible, but there's actually data and studies, you know, I think it's out of uh, Boston Children's Hospital that says that it's not uh, reversible and that there's actually people that transitioned at nine years old. And when they took the puberty blockers at 17, they still had the penis of a nine year old. So I'm just saying I'm if I had a penis of a nine year old, that would make me severely depressed. That would be irreversible because there's not a pill that you can just make your penis grow to the size of a 17 year old. So I just do think when you said it's irreversible, that's incorrect. But I think a lot of the stuff you did say is correct. So one of the things I want to touch on for me and my research that I've done is in, in, and I've done a little bit of gender studies. I said it in college, but basically I'd like to break down gender into five sexes all right you have male and female and then you have intersex i mean somebody's born with with genitals that are either you know mutated maybe born with a penis and a vagina and then you have male that transitions to female and then you have female that transitions to male just for the basis of breaking it down 
So I'm all for that. I, I think everybody should have the right to transition 100%. But my problem, once again, is with the age of consent. So you said uh, in your thing that it's not experimental. Of course, the Lupron medicine has been used in cancer patients for prostate because what it happens is, is if it retards the ability to create testosterone that it actually has been shown to help some sort of cancers in the genitals. But when you say that that is not ex uh, uh, an experimental uh, application for uh, the transition of children is absolutely incorrect. That is still experimental and it is not FDA approved for the transition of children. That uh, is a fact that it is not FDA approved to use that to transition children. Now it is FDA approved to use it for cancer treatment. So I just want to make sure to, to, you know, get that out there. But like I said, it's the reversibility of the issue. We live in a day and age where children aren't even allowed to vote until they're 18 years old. Uh, they, you know, uh, they're not even allowed to get a tattoo. And let's say a tattoo, you can get that. That's reversible. Like uh, for me, the big kick in the rear end is if it was reversible, then maybe, you know, I, I would maybe give it some sort of leeway. But when you think about the mastectomy and you cut off a woman's breast, you cut off a child's breast, and then you say that you can replace them, you don't replace them with the same organ that you cut off so it's not the same and and you were quoting a lot of stats now there was actually a, a recent study done i believe it was on abc or, or i forget which it was uh, outlet but there was a, a much higher number of people that actually regretted their transition now i get it i'm not saying that people i, I don't want like i said i want to say this from start i don't think people should not be able to transition if you want to transition to a, a whatever sex that you want go ahead as a matter of fact i, I don't care if the military the soldiers we can pay for it I, I what i my problem is and i don't even really want to sound like i want to protect the children i just don't believe that it is irreversible so when i see the social agenda and the social stigma and then when the stats that i have read it, it's actually an alarming amount of homeless children people without parents that are the ones that are getting the surgery and also a large amount of autistic children so when you have people that are autistic i, I you can look this up Arden. I, I can i can quote this a lot of people that are autistic that are getting the surgery they don't have the capacity to make a decision and they don't realize the severity of cutting off their genitals and for me this is another thing where i don't want to sound insensitive to children whatsoever but when you get a child at nine years old and you put them on puberty blockers and then you give them gender reassignment surgery that child is never able to fully have an orgasm so they will never experience what an orgasm is like for their sex now you can say oh with their new genitals they, they might be able to experience an orgasm i, I you, there's doctors that will argue that both ways now i don't know i haven't had my genitals cut off i haven't had my penis turned into a vagina but i can just tell you naturally that i do know how to orgasm and that that's one of the, my most favorite things to do is to orgasm and if i was to lose that ability that would a big spark of my life would suck and so i just don't want a child to lose that ability without knowing the the consequences of their actions because there's a lot of reasons why we put age limitations on things so the idea that i don't want puberty blockers to exist would be absurd i understand that there are applications that they are approved to be used for like uh in the instance of, of uh lowering testosterone and people that have cancer of the genitals or, or but that doesn't mean that i believe that it should be used experimentally on children that decide that they're more feminine than men and and i want to go back to the stats too now i know your stats i think you said it was 99 point Oh, four. Per, what was it? It was something like 99% of the people don't regret um, the after getting surgery. I think that number is grossly uh, incorrect because when you actually look at the rate of, of people after they have the gender reassignment surgery and the amount of suicide, the amount of drug use and the amount of mental health issues, it's a huge correlation with the gender dysphoria syndrome that causes them to cut off the syndrome so cut off their genitals so you could argue that it is a mental disease not a physical disease and once again i'll give you the five sexes i i, I won't even limit it to two sexes because i want to be totally advantageous for everybody to be able to feel th their true self but what i'm saying is when you're making permanent decisions that are going to last last a lifetime to children that don't have the brain capability their brains are not done growing and when you put them on puberty blockers it has a it creates a domino effect it creates their it, it, what it what it does is it creates they say a stage of arrested development and at the age that the ch child starts taking the the puberty blockers their emotional health 
supposedly gets stuck at that age. Now, obviously, this is, there's different doctors that say different things about this. But I tend to believe that's not natural for uh, children to take hormone medicine. And I just believe in the more natural thing that once a kid is 18 or maybe 17, if that's in their state, or if they get emancipated at that age, if they want to do that, sure, go ahead. But to give it to a nine year old, to give it to a teenager, uh, uh, you know, even anything under a teenager is absolutely absurd. And it's just not right. And it's not fair to the child because they don't realize what they're doing. You wouldn't give that eight year old keys to a uh, semi truck and say, hey, go drive it down the street. You wouldn't do that because that's dangerous. And so what I'm saying is we do have to have a personal freedom. I'm all for freedoms and, and personal freedoms and being able to decide your gender. Go ahead. But for a child to make a decision that you said is reversible when all the studies and facts that I've seen have showed that it's not reversible and that if you do stop the growth of your penis at nine years old and then you decide to change your mind at 17, your penis is going to be that same size. And ending the ability for a, a, a person to ever have the ability to orgasm naturally with their biological sex for me is one of the biggest travesties so that is what you do when you put a, a, a child on the puberty blockers before they're able to have a natural orgasm it, it, it they never got to test what it was like they never got to feel that sexual feeling so for me i'm coming at it from the sexual health part is that once you decide to take the puberty blockers, it is irreversible. And then once you are on that train, it just creates a mental health disaster that it's hard to come back from because, like I said, I believe the puberty blockers are irreversible. That's my time. Thank you so very much, Alex. And once again, for those of you listening, if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button as we have many more juicy debates coming up. In fact, this Wednesday, Chud Logic and Rob are debating whether conservatives are persecuted more than leftists on social media, and you don't want to miss it. All right. We're going to jump into the open dialogue, and I remind you folks that our guests are linked at the descriptions if you'd like to hear more of what they're talking about. As always, we appreciate both of you being with us, and the floor is all yours. I can't hear you, Arden. I think you're muted. That's my bad. You good now? We're good? Oh, yes, yes. We can hear you loud. Awesome. So I have... I have so many things I want to say after your opening statement. Uh, I find, oh God, I don't even know where to begin. So Somewhere, begin somewhere. Sure. We've got plenty of time. So I think you're a little bit confused at, at the kind of the differences between a, a transition and getting maybe like genital surgery and uh, as well as um, <laughs> Uh, you were making claims about how like if somebody takes these hormone blockers that it is like a domino effect that impacts their quality of life like you said it, the mental health disaster i think was what you said if they decided you know what happens is they change their mind if they take these hormones like my my example is of a nine-year-old man and and i've read and i saw this guy perfect example i can pull up the youtube video but at nine years old he decided to take puberty blockers and at 17 he changed his mind and he regretted it because he still had the penis of a nine-year-old so that he was really depressed so what i'm saying is it can cause because you say it's not irreversible something you can do to your body at nine years old that makes your penis not grow and then you decide to change it can have mental health effects is what I was trying to say. So I would love to see that because I'm almost willing to guarantee based on the medical literature that I've seen, and I'm pulling from a source that a med student friend of mine has linked to me for their standards of care that they use. Uh, the I can almost guarantee that in that case, if this person, you said they detransitioned at 17 was when they realized it was a mistake. At yes. that point, they almost certainly would not have been on hormone blockers. Any endocrinologist? Well, they started at nine. They started at hormone blockers at nine, and then and right. then that's why their penis stops growing at nine years old. I don't know okay. how long they yes. took hormone I, blockers. I agree. Let, let me. Uh, so they might have started hormone blockers at nine, but no endocrinologist worth their skin would allow somebody to stay on hormone blockers alone from nine years old to whatever age, most likely what would have caused actual penile and testicular atrophy would have been them going on to cross sex hormones, estrogen and androgen blockers, 
probably around a year to two years after the initial treatment. That would happen. And don't get me wrong, that is horrible that that happens and that this person regrets it and that they feel so destroyed about that. I think that's a travesty and I wish there were more resources for those people, right? There, I, I hope that as medicine develops, we have more things we can do to address scenarios like this. But again, the issue you're talking about is- but So do you admit that it's not reversible though? So you admit that no, it's not reversible? No, because you're confused about which treatments are reversible and which aren't. If, if they, you take if this, puberty blockers and you stop and you don't have a natural, you don't have your natural puberty, that is not, you can't just turn on, you can't just turn the puberty back on Arden. Yes, that's you can. Not, yes, you can. Arden, that is not how it works. That's not Absolutely how time works. You can. have it. Well, what about all the time you missed when you didn't have the puberty on all those times you could have grown? Sure. The, the time missed that sucks and that's why so I'm so so on an equal so if you live the same amount of time frame and you turned it you turned on your puberty and you didn't turn on your puberty you wouldn't be the same person do you understand that on the time, same time span so it does have an irreversible damage no matter what no matter what wait, if you wait, take wait, a puberty wait, what i'm saying is you're trying to say that there's you can turn it off and on that's it that's absurd that's not true so no. you're telling me that you can take I'm not puberty telling blockers. You, you can go back in time i'm not telling you you okay. can magically go back in time okay. what i'm telling you is that the evidence suggests at least six months to a year following the cessation of use of a puberty blocker not hormones not hrt not estrogen hormone blockers luprolide if you quit using those say you say oh no actually i don't want to transition so you just stop taking the hormone blockers and that's all you've done six months following that six months to a year menstruation and normal puberty hormone levels resume endogenous puberty resumes to wherever it left off i mean i think it's kind of disingenuous to say that it wouldn't have any effect or that it's the same as it would have been if you didn't take the puberty blockers is pretty absurd but okay i'm not saying well, there's it's there's nothing happened obviously this person yeah. is going to have to wrestle with psychologically like why did i think i was trans what does that mean about me is there something deeper that i have to explore sure there's something that's going to happen there but medically that child has nothing medically happened to them and that's why I've said repeatedly, there need to be more resources available for these people so that if anything else medically results from that, there is resources and more importantly than the medicine, because that's almost in, like almost invariably not going to be an issue. Psychologically, there need to be resources for these people. I agree. I think the mental health aspect is a, is a big part of it that we're overlooking. Um, so what age do you think children should be able to decide to take puberty blockers? I don't know if you said that in your opening statement. Yeah, I think that's a decision that they should come to between them, their parent and their doctor based on their like, point of development. So most of the time, like most doctors, if, if they know that a child is trans at a very, very young age, they would want to start puberty blockers around Tanner stage two of puberty, which can be as early as nine for people assigned female at birth and can be 11 for people assigned male at birth. But no doctor would leave them on for more than two years because that's where significant side effects start to show up. At that point, they would be given the option to either stop the use altogether or to be put on to cross sex hormones. You seem to have a lot of faith in these good doctors. I just think that to think it's opposite. I think people are able to find doctors that are able to put them on these drugs for any price of money, you know, any sort of these doctors. Well, be that's because pulled. the the research in the medicine seems to suggest that puberty blockers are not a harmful drug. So there's I, really I no, no significant to be fair, risk. To be fair, Arden, there is there is also lots of research that disagrees with what you say. I know that please, you think that. Please you're... give me an example because well, we, we can pull it up. I mean, I... research so much, and I can guarantee you. Well, that... there is research that says that that the damage is not irreversible. I guarantee you that there's that there's research that says that. There's I was always that a today. risk of irreversible things happening. Like I that's what out... I'm saying. So 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 you're you're telling but me you're going to let a nine year old child make a decision for something that's irreversible? Doesn't that no, seem a little? Not like dangerous. I'm just saying like, ah, it's probably going to have irreversible changes. Ah, who fucking cares? No, it's with any medicine. With any medicine, there's a potential for significant side effects to happen that could permanently impact somebody's life. Yeah, but we to don't compare just kids, puberty wait, blockers we don't just to tell aspirin. Kids, we don't just tell kids that they can't have right. access to medicine because there's yeah. a risk for something to happen. That's absurd. Yeah. That's not how medicine works.
Arden, but this isn't normal medicine. This is medicine that this stops is your nat. No, your the medicine that stops your normal maturation as a human. I don't think is normal medicine. I think naturally as humans we're supposed to grow like a plant. So I think if you sprayed something on a plant that Wait. made the plant grow, I'm serious. Let's just say a plant. Down. Uh, that it's natural for the natural maturation of a human being is not to be stunted. That's that's that seems unhealthy. It'd be like if I sprayed something on a on a plant to make it grow slower. That would be considered unhealthy or inorganic. I mean, at some point, have you ever heard of a bonsai tree? <laughs> like, dude, what I'm saying all is, medicine is, is unnatural. It's not natural to have a Tylenol in my head when I have a headache. Like, yeah, but you're comparing puberty blockers to Tylenol is very dangerous, in my opinion, because they're very different and they have very Obviously, different effects. Obviously, they're different. Obviously, they have different effects. I'm not saying they're similar, but I'm saying that all medicine comes with side effects and all medicine is unnatural. So yeah, but a side effect that makes your penis stop growing at nine years old is pretty significant. And the some medicine that will make it limited that you could never have an orgasm the rest of your life is not the same as a Tylenol. Okay, I don't opinion. know where you got this information about orgasm, but I can tell you that even following uh, genital surgery, the research suggests that orgasm is perfectly like most of the the vast, vast majority of the time it's attainable. Some patients I disagree. Are I disagree. You can disagree with the research, but that's fine. I mean, that's just a baseless claim. Uh, the, some patients are even reporting more. It's a baseless orgasm. claim to say that you can cut off my penis and make me have a vagina and I would have a better orgasm than I did with my penis. You're telling me that's yes, a baseless claim? The research suggests Come on, otherwise, Arden, Alex. Arden, Arden, I get it. I get it. And I'm on your side on all this. I want to be on not, your side. You're, you're patent I not. am. I am. But to think that I can cut off my penis and turn it into a vagina and I'm going to actually have Alex, a better you orgasm. you think I'm trying to get you to cut off your penis? No, I'm He's not. Really I, no, I will. I will. I, I would. I, and I will, you know what? I don't hardly use it. I, if I cut it off, I wouldn't even miss it. I'm just saying, listen, if I don't think my orgasm okay. would be the same if I cut off my penis and turn into a vagina. I think that's okay, not wait, baseless. You said that's, that's baseless. I don't think that's baseless. That's a different claim. Saying your orgasm would be different. Like, duh, your orgasm is going to be different if it's coming from a completely different neo vagina versus a penis. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. That doesn't mean you're uh, like removing. So the I never got to have my natural orgasm. orgasm. I know, but my natural what orgasm, that, that's very important to what me. What if someone prefer? Okay, but you are a cisgender man. What so if you yes. prefer? No, you just Coming. said it. What if you prefer? So so you when you put a child on puberty blockers and at an age where they never got to have their natural orgasm, they never had the preference because they never got to choose. That's the problem with my puberty blockers is that you don't Dude, ever get to okay, choose your on. sexual preference. This is, this is a bad argument. And I'll tell you why. Do you think when lesbians come out, if they're a gold star lesbian, never fucked a man in their life, do you think that they're like, oh gosh, well, I never tried a man, so how do I know well, what I they, prefer? No. If they never met me, no. if they met me, they would regret that they never had sex with me, but that's Please different because I was turning into a lesbian. Well, if you ever said that to a well, lesbian, most lesbians, in the face, uh, I would make every excuse for her. Well, Ellen DeGeneres wrote me a letter, but I don't want to talk about Ellen right now. I want to talk okay. about this. I want to talk, but on a, on, on, a, on a serious note, though, the orgasm thing, the sexual health is a big deal because a lot of times I don't, I didn't, you kind of don't feel like a man till you kind of bust your load in a weird way. And I, I'd imagine that's the same for a woman. I don't know that, but you almost don't feel like a woman until you probably pop your cherry type situation. So when you're, when you're, you're taking medicine that makes it so these natural maturation, these things that are so great, I remember losing my virginity like it was yesterday. It was the most badass day of my life. Mary Williams, Look. we were 69 and we were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It was awesome. What I'm saying is if I didn't get to have that experience, I would be suicidal and depressed and i don't want other children to have that okay. i don't want them to miss out on their experience with mary williams and getting to 69 when being, their dad was so, out of town for being so gung-ho about sexual health i think it's a little weird that you're saying someone is going to be suicidal if they don't come by the time they're like 16. like dude i'm a sex worker i'm right there with you i'm all about sexual health i want people to be not ashamed of their sexuality and what they like and what makes them feel good that's awesome totally there for you but my issue is with the claim that this is going to impact orgasm and besides this is totally well how are your orgasms no but how are your orgasms before and after I'm, transitioning Orden? i'm not going to talk about my orgasms with no. you but i 
I that is totally irrelevant to the topic of whether or not horror. No, it is horror. relevant. Yes, but no, dude, that is so relevant because if you take the hor listen, why it's relevant because if you take the hormone blockers at an early age, at nine years old, so you're a boy and you transition to a female, so you never uh, jack off, you never come, and then you take the hormone blockers, and then at 17, 18, you die, you decide to have turn cut your penis off and turn it into a vagina. You never naturally jacked off or had a uh, a a. a uh, ejaculation as a male you wouldn't know what it's like so this is the puberty blockers stop you and there are kids that have fallen victim of this that have never got to have a natural orgasm that's a fact I that you cannot Arden, Arden, you cannot argue that there's a fact that there's kids that didn't that got on puberty blockers at an early age and never had never had a natural I orgasm have, that is I a don't fact see any data to support the claim that you're making right now and i still don't see how it's relevant at all because it has nothing because the to puberty do blockers the puberty oh, blockers uh, this is not about your potential to orgasm after you've had genital surgery is not related to whether or not hormone blockers are a risk for minors hormone what do you mean what do you again, mean again I it's a domino so effect times, can, can, well can you have can you, that can you have no effect to not being able to do, come do, uh, you took hormone do, blockers do, do, yes that's true but do, 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 uh, do you have to take hormone blockers before gender reassignment surgery I, I'm not interested in discussing this stuff with you. Yes, you I, do because it's a domino effect. So you have, have to take people. it. So, so a kid. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. so a kid has what? to take Guess it what? before. So, I so it is pertinent. I took hormone blockers and I still jacked off and I still came and it was fine because you know what? Your information is bullshit. Like it's not relevant. Well, you're lucky. You're lucky enough that you still were able to jack off. There's some Except, some people were not. People but there are there are people that didn't aren't so lucky as you to jack off so sure, much and they didn't get to have a natural orgasm. Risk, there's risks with every single medicine. There are so many medicines where impotence and infertility is a risk. That's that's not an uncommon thing. Even just a, a what do you call it? A birth control. Birth control has an impact potential. I agree. I agree. Like that doesn't mean people shouldn't take it. That's a terrible argument. People should take birth control if they feel like that they, with their doctor, decide that that's the best thing for them. But are there risks? Yes, there are risks with literally everything in medicine. The, the question with medicine is a cost benefit analysis. Does the potential risk outweigh the potential gain? And with hormone blockers, it is overwhelmingly clear that the potential gain far out exceeds the potential risks. I would disagree. I think the risk are and you have way. No, you disagree. You have no, no I do. I do. I have tons of evidence. There's tons of evidence. There's as much evidence for me uh, on the internet as for you. I promise no, you that. No, there's I'm not really not. That. You read there one is. story about a Arden. dude with a little Arden. penis, and that's Arden. your evidence. That's yeah, and I feel evidence. bad for his little penis, and I feel and bad I for feel his little penis. It, too, it doesn't sound like it because you want to. You want a bunch of other people to have little penises and stuck with little penises because you know you do know people change their mind, Arden, and that's the thing is you cannot be in zero point percent. We talk See, that's not that number is incorrect. I disagree with you on that number, and we can file okay, that. But that's that number is based on a like the it's, most uh, bad nah, bad fake. That's, that's Trump would say is fake news. I don't even like Trump. I'm just saying that's fake news. That's I mean, dude, fake. you can disagree with the science and the evidence. You know personally. Well, You're I know. Well, well, I'm just saying. I know. I know. But, uh, listen, I just know people that I know a person at a spin studio that was uh, that was a female that transitioned to a male and then went back to female. So I know one person that transitioned and went back to female. So in my life, I, I know. I'm just saying, I personally know somebody. So Dude, it's it's. You might personally know somebody. Guess what? You. So that's know. less. So, so that proves your stat wrong because your stat's like no, 99.02 percent. I shouldn't. I'm just you saying your stats. Your stats Alex, incorrect. Alex, Alex, that does not Arden, disprove my stat. Honey, that does my, not disprove my, my yes. Research. You could have you could have a hundred and four of those people, and it would still fit perfectly with it with what the research suggested. Do you know how math works? 0.4% oh, uh, of 27,000 uh. that were sampled. That doesn't even mean that's all transgender Americans. Those are just the ones that are sampled. <laughs> Arden, that is not true. A lot of more people regret the gender uh, surgery than you. Give me are evidence. Saying. Prove it. I can. I, 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 we can pull up studies. I'm just saying. I, I don't want to have to do a share evidence. screen. I don't want to have to do a share screen the whole time. But on Twitter, I will. I will send you the video I saw. I was just there. Was they just That's did it? Oh, if I can debunk your did. evidence, will you make a video saying I was wrong and I admit it? No, because I'm not. Because, because it's not wrong. You're a liar, and you're disingenuous. I'm not a liar. Not I'm not. I'm not the one being disingenuous. You're the one that's being disingenuous to I'm say that. You're the one that's being disingenuous. I'm trying.
What do you mean I have bullshit and stories? What are you talking about? I have the actual. You're telling me I have bullshit and stories when you're when we're de we're debating puberty blockers. Kids take yeah. puberty blockers, their penises stop oh growing, and then when they decide okay. and they decide they want to have their penis back, they don't get to have it back. And I so I don't think these kids with little penises. But when we're talking about medicine, no, I'm obsessed with protecting kids matter. for their penises growing normal care sizes. About protecting kids, you're gonna care about the. Data I don't even care about protecting family. kids. What I'm saying is, you are wait, these oh, kids. Wait, 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 wait. Can you say that again? You don't care about I don't kids? I don't care about protect, protecting okay, kids. Cool. I'm not here to protect kids. I'm not because I'm not here to protect kids. I'm here to do what's right. And it's not right to put children on to make decisions. You don't let them vote. You don't let them drive uh, uh, cars. There's yeah. certain age requirements to a lot lesser stuff than puberty blockers. And I believe those rules should apply to them. So uh, listen, it's not I about the children. It's not, I'm not here to debate. I'm not here in honor of the children. I'm not, vir I'm not virtue signaling for children. I, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help uh, a society because what, what's prob what the no, problem is that if yes, it is. Yes, because it's a, it, these Alex, people are being stop. manipulated Alex, by social Alex, media. Young people Alex, are being manipulated by social stop. media. You Listen, Arden, help, it's a fact. No, it's a stop. fact that these kids are being uh, manipulated and they're being subliminally no programmed to make that. these decisions. A hundred percent. It's okay. Yeah, you can look at the stats. The amount of, of kids. The amount of kids that. I, that's a fact, Arden. The amount. The amount. Listen, let me just say this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Then I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Go ahead. Actually cared about helping society. You actually cared about supporting kids you would follow the evidence where it leads the evidence overwhelmingly points to very few people regret transition very few people regret taking puberty blockers puberty blockers have almost no significant side effects and are largely reversible it's like there's that's that's false scary. arden you cannot keep saying that everybody in the chat no, go do, do one do guys do one ounce I of research and you can see it is not right i don't care what fake research talking about uh, puberty blockers okay, are not reversible science, but it's not reversible research, arden, i care about, about science you're, you're, you're the one arden, 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 arden you're the one saying it's reversible when it's not it is not reversible Except when you take puberty blockers it is not reversible just because a girl can have her period again doesn't mean that she would have had the same period now Naturally, after the puberty blockers, I'm telling you, they are Wait, not irreversible. If, if, if a girl loses her period and then gains it back, it's not the same as having her period the whole time. Is what that a means. Period? Do you think it's, it's like she's different? Yes, her 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 uh, biological makeup, her hormonal makeup okay, is different. That's a fact, Arden. If you're gonna make a claim Arden, like you're that. the one that's saying that, that the medicine does have an effect, but then it doesn't have an effect. So you know, you want to you want to have, have your cake and eat it too. You, you're saying that you have some evidence. You're pointing some study. That's not real evidence, hun. I'm just telling you, that's not real oh, evidence. Don't call me, hun. Don't call me. I'm just telling you. I'm just being honest Dude, with you. Like you're the you one that's not based in reality. You're you're saying that it's not. Re you're saying that it's well, totally reversible. Okay. Explain this. Explain this. So, so if a girl has a mastectomy and she cuts off her breast, how can how is that reversible? How is That's a mastectomy? Not hormone blockers. We're not here debating mastectomy. You before you have a Debate mastectomy, you take mastectomy. hormone blockers. Yeah, because that's on the path. So I don't want to get a person on. No, it's not like if you take a hormone blocker, you're entering a legally binding contract to cut off your tits. No, but it's you're entering in a, in a non-reversible contract that you're signing to for life, and you're no, trying to say you're that you're not. not. You yes, no you are. To back up that point. Yeah, I have no evidence that medicine affects you for the rest of your life. You're absurd, Arden. And that's really ingenuous to think that. To think that taking puberty blockers for any amount of time doesn't have an effect on your body for the rest of your life is absurd. And you know that. And so it if you want to. It that long term effects. It's oh horrible. my god, Arden, babe, you're telling me puberty blockers don't have a long-term effect. Something that makes it so your penis stops growing. Or uh, give me a break, Arden. That is that is absurd. I'm not Look, okay with that. Sit here and talk about penises all night. That's fine. That's I what we're talking about. Fluid. We're here I talking about love... penises, oh Arden. God, we're here. That's stop. what we're talking don't about stop. is penises. I wish I had like a, a a click remote so I could pause you and mute you. I uh. If you had any evidence, if you showed up here with a study and said, actually, look, I have this study that shows that this significant percent actually do regret puberty blockers and that this significant percent actually do have an issue. You know what I would do? I would say, oh shit, actually, my position has been wrong. I'm gonna stop advocating for what I'm advocating for because the evidence suggests that this isn't safe, but the evidence overwhelmingly points in the direction that this is a largely reversible treatment and that it is safe for kids. There is no long-term risks unless kids are on this for longer Stop than two saying. years. Stop saying. Okay, so if they're on it for longer than two years, there is long-term effects.
Yeah, but that's why endocrine. And then they decide. So you get at nine years old. So so you get on at nine years old. You get on at nine years old and you decide to stop at eleven. Is there long term effects? No. Wait, no, wait, you just said it was. You just said it was. You're such a liar. No. You just said it if you're over two years, there's long term effects. You just you know said what it, man. Nine to eleven is? You sweetie you know pie honey bunch. You just said it. Yeah, nine, two years. 10, yes, 11, yes, two yes. Years okay, then nine. To, okay, then how about nine to twelve? If you stop, if you take it from nine to twelve, and you stop taking it, are there well, long term effects? Would be at that it's, point in time. Okay, so there are long term effects. No, so there are. Ir- are there stop? irreversible effects? Are there irreversible effects? Can you stop? You asked me a question. I would like to answer your fucking question. Go ahead, please. So the standards of care would never let a doctor have a kid on that medicine for longer than two years. If a doctor is putting someone on that medicine for longer than two years, because at that point there is significant risk, that doctor would be committing like malpractice. So So I guess at 23 months, so at 23 months, there's no damage. There's no damage. It doesn't have any lasting effects if you took the hormones for 23 months instead of 24 months. No, and if there's anything No. The no. So, oh, okay. So you really believe that, Arden? Come on, you're base. Let's yes, be based in reality. So you're telling me. Oh, so you're telling me. So if you take puberty blockers for 23 months, but you stop and you don't take it for 24, there's no lasting effects. You believe that, honey? Medicine's not perfect. You believe that? You believe that? You're lying. You know you're lying. If you want to back up your point at all, I'd be happy to talk. My about point. Okay. No so, evidence. so. Okay, then let me ask ask you this question. Answer this one question. Answer this one question. If you take puberty blockers, if you take puberty blockers for 23 months, are there irreversible damage on a human being? According to the data, there does not appear to be any significant (laughs) risk of harm before 24 months of use. It's really uh, sad. It's just sad that you believe that, that you can't see reality right in front of your face that a kid on it for 23 months would be affected by it. It's really sad that you're not based in reality, Arden, but I didn't come here to talk to somebody based in reality. Different bodies have different risks. They're actually in the standards of care. Different bodies have different risks. Perfect. Perfect, Perfect you, example. Oh my God. You got to, you got to like, you know, a debate is like a back and forth, right? Like, Jesus. I, if you look at the, the research, it also suggests that people who already have pre-existing conditions with uh, such as like uh, eating disorders or that have like osteoporosis or something ahead of time shouldn't even be given this medicine because there is a higher risk. But assuming all else is healthy, like I'm assuming that this doctor would do their due diligence and give this kid a full fucking examination before they put them on this medicine, then yes, there is no risk at that point. Like, if you want to suggest otherwise, you need to come with data. You don't just get to say. What do you mean data? data? I know. I've, I've, listen, I've watched the videos. You get, everybody can do their you, own research. You, you keep saying there's no data. Video. Arden, That's Arden, you keep saying there's no data. Stuff. There is data. Okay, well, I'm, t- I'm not saying talk. that. I just there, want to address the audience there are people on my side, though, as well. Can, I just want to address the audience really quickly. Please. Can we acknowledge here that when I just asked him to give evidence, he suggested a YouTube video when I have, oh, like, so many academic studies supporting my side. I can if pull up wants, academic people, studies. There are on, academic studies that. on my if side, Arden. If to defend his point with YouTube videos, that's fine. But I hope the audience has the ability to discern between someone who's backing their point up with evidence and someone who watched a couple of YouTube videos. Arden, you said you, you, you honestly are being honest when you said that a kid that took puberty blockers for 23 months doesn't have irreversible damage, but a kid at 24 months hey, does. Do you know the how fact that you can't even... The, uh, the fact that you can't even justify that or see that just shows that you're ingenuous. You know, I mean, you're you being ingenuous. you know ingenuous. how medicine works? Like, I'm very familiar with, with how medicine works. Okay, good. Then you should understand that, yes, with anyone, there is a potential risk. But as we pointed out already in this uh, debate, medicine is about weighing the cost-benefit. Yeah, there is a potential risk before 24 months, but the potential risk is not significant enough to warrant banning this medication for people who would actually benefit from it. Yeah, I disagree. I just think kids but are too young. But you don't have a reason to disagree. That's why. Yes, because off. yes, because it's irreversible. Because it causes it's irreversible not damage. Irreversible. You have it no- is so Arden. It is irreversible. Fire, like you have a point, but you that's don't. A, she's the one. She's the one. She wrote a whole book about I how it's. There, there's a whole book about this. I'm not even trying to, but I'm not even trying to bring that into it because Arden, I'm not trying to argue with Her you about this. Full of bad research, though. Okay, but listen, listen. 
It, it, listen, I'm on your side. I'm not against trans people. I'm not against you transition. I'm not. I'm not, Arden. I don't want to come here. I don't want to come off like I'm against that. I'm just saying a nine-year-old doesn't get to choose what they eat for dinner. They don't get to choose whether they get to go to a, a macaroni or a rotisserie chicken. So I don't think they should get to choose whether they take puberty blockers because they like to wear a dress or you're something. I, you know, and I don't I, no, I'm, not I'm not confused. No, I'm not confused. I'm not confused at all. I'm, I don't want children I'm, on I'm, irreversible I'm, medicine I'm, at an I'm, age I'm, that they can't take any. I'm, 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 should a nine-year-old be able to take Xanax? No, because there's... Well, actually, I'm not going to make a claim on that because... Should a nine-year-old no be able to take Xanax? I, I have no awareness of... Exactly. What, See, you know, Arden, you wouldn't give a nine-year-old Xanax, you shouldn't give a nine-year-old no, puberty stop. blockers. You can't just insert words into my mouth. If a medical professional could show me evidence that there was no significant risk to that kid and that that kid had specifically enough symptoms that the benefit of taking the medicine outweighed the risks, then I would be perfectly fine with it. But I don't know anything about Xanax, and I don't know what that has to do with puberty blockers. Because again, You're the one that's comparing medicine. Oh You're the God, one saying puberty point. blockers are just like other medicine. Point, Jesus. You gotta, you gotta pull back your, sorry, your trigger I'm happy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my sweet angel. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. No, I don't think that nine-year-olds should just get to march into a clinic and say, what's up, doc? Can you shoot me up with some Lupron? Obviously fucking not. I want a, a kid who has been presenting with gender dysphoria for long enough, who is there with their parent, who goes to see a professional who says this kid has demonstrated the appropriate symptoms for the appropriate amount of time. And this kid is, is perfectly within good health, has no other risks, and is therefore qualified to be on this medicine. Just like with everything else, we look at what this kid's individual circumstances are and what medicine would be best for that child in that moment. If a professional decides that that's the case, then I absolutely support that professional's decision. I'm not act I'm not coming here saying that nine-year-olds get to decide their health care. Obviously not. And it's kind of annoying that you're going to keep suggesting that because I'm saying that professionals get to decide with parents what is best for a kid who is presenting symptoms. And the, oh, not only that, but the evidence has overwhelmingly demonstrated that this improves their quality of life. You mentioned earlier uh, kids who had like a uh, mental health issues and drug use. Uh, there's particularly a study that measured kids who took hormone blockers, uh, or actually I don't know if they took hormone blockers, I think it was socially transitioned. Uh, but kids who had supportive parents and supportive peers, their depressive symptoms, all of their like those negative things you associated with being trans were the exact same as their cis peers. They had no negative, like they had a slightly higher anxiety levels, but like their depression. Um, <laughs> so you admit that oh, they had more anxiety. Like, Come on. It doesn't, listen, I get it. I get it. I, I get like, your position. I know Arden, 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 I understand. I, I, listen, listen, you're going to have to defend this staunchly. And this is a hill that I don't want to die on. I know that you're more passionate about it. Wait, I just want, I just, what? Well, I just want to. I'm, what I'm going to say is, if you're not going to die on this hill, though, like I care well, because, about because truth, because I no, care about you don't no care about truth. You don't care about truth because you're saying it's not irreversible, and it, it it is irreversible. You're saying that these people can just take it for 23 months and then just no, stop I taking it and then have their period. No, no, Arden, exactly. Arden, real quick, let me say something. Let me say something. Multiple times tonight, you have said that this is reversible, and the state, the data that I've seen okay. from that woman's book says it is not reversible and there's other doctors that she quoted in that book that oh says if you take hor listen I'm not, let me just say this if you take hormone blockers for 23 months or 24 months you admit after two years that you have irreversible damage so you admit you admit that you said that you have damage from that, that that's irreversible so i just don't think my my the only thing i'm trying to die on, i just don't think kids should be able to choose at nine years old to have some sort of take a medicine that causes them to have irreversible damage later on in life with their sexual reproductive health that is some of the most important things in the world i mean getting laid is like my favorite thing i very rarely get to do it no, and if i everyone didn't everyone is insanely crazy about getting laid right but anyway sorry that's i'm not going to get down that sidetrack uh this is why propaganda is so bad because you have said irreversible damage so many times and it's clear that like this book it's not in your head and again I, I think you're not basing reality, Arden. Let, Arden. No, Alex, fuck you. Don't say that because well, that is not what the evidence Explain how it's reversible. You're, tell me, you're stop, saying some stop, study stop, says it's stop, reversible. That's stop, not stop. enough. Stop. 
If you're gonna come at me and tell me that I'm not in reality, you better have some fucking evidence to prove your point. But the fact is, you have nothing- You said that- my evidence is that you said at 23 months that there's no damage, but at 24 months there is. So the fact that you can't even admit it's that like just shows that you're not based in reality, huh? Dude, you don't- you're misunderstanding what I'm saying if you get the impression that I think there's a magical switch at 24 months. At 24 months, there are statistically higher risk. Obviously, I don't know everything about, like, blood chemistry. Is there a possibility that, like, 23 and a half months is where that actual, like, line is? It's possible. I don't fucking know. That's irrelevant because the data suggests that 24 months, two years, is the deadline we should be concerned about. Are there risks other than that that could potentially happen? Yes, just like there are risks with every fucking medicine. Have you ever watched a medicine commercial? At the end, they list you like 75 different ways that your ass could explode like from taking this medicine. Well, I, I, hey, no, real quick, let me answer that. Everything with medicine. Let me say one thing, uh, America and Europe, they can't have pharmaceutical uh, commercials because they're not allowed to advertise. So if you look at Big that's Pharma here good. in America, well, let me make that. my I point. That's great. I know, I am too, but what I'm saying is Big Pharma here in America is a for-profit business. So there are doctors that wanna be niche doctors that focus on the transitioning of children. So there, this is, uh, yes, so this is I, a I business. I agree Big Pharma is the problem, but that, that's- So, so I don't trust Big you. Pharma. I don't trust, what I'm saying is you admit that Big Pharma is a problem, but then you trust them to give children puberty blockers. But so Big you're talking Pharma out of both sides of your body. Hey kids, have you ever felt like you're a little bit different? How about you shoot up with a looper light? That's not happening. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. No, there is nothing. What are you like talking that. about? There are the, the trans, the trans acceptance out. movement, which I'm all for, which I'm so pro you trans can't, movement. You can't say but this it, at the same time. You can't say this. Yeah, I am pro trans. Time. I'm just saying. It, 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 look, they do studies. The amount of kids that that identify as trans in in from from the year 2000 to 2021 is up 600 percent from you know the 20 years before. That's not just because more kids want to transition it's because it's more socially acceptable because there's a collective consciousness that makes it okay so more kids are likely to do it for different reasons for social attention for actual attention for because they actually uh, had gender dysphoria there's multiple reasons why you'd want to transition i'm just saying it's not just one reason it's not just one oh because i was born in the wrong sex so if you just say that there are people that don't make the decision to transition and change their mind that have irreversible damage is ingenuine because there are multiple people that are on the internet that you can look that regret ever transitioning they said it was the worst thing ever and they said they never wish oh they would have taken puberty listen listen though. let me finish let me finish they said they would they never wish they would have taken puberty blockers and then they got they got prescribed it by a doctor after hardly going to him after the doctor hardly even hearing their situation so i'm just saying if anybody falls through the crack and they're uh, they start taking medicine at nine years old that shrinks their dick and at 17 they want to change their mind and they got a tiny penis that sucks i would hate that and i would probably kill myself so i can see why the rates of suicide are high for people that have issues with uh, okay, uh re wild. re uh, retransitioning um, Jesus Christ. Again, that, that doesn't matter. You can have stories. I don't care about stories. Stories on an individual, like, do I empathize with the individual telling that story? Yes. Do I, do I think like, man, I hope that we improve our diagnostic criteria so this happens less? Absolutely. Do I think, wow, I wish there were more resources, even medically, to help these people feel more in their skin after going through this? Absolutely. But what that does not represent is enough of a case to warrant taking away this medicine from people who between a parent, a medical professional and their child have decided is best for that child. If you wanna advocate for the state to ban this medicine between that a professional and a parent have decided is the best thing for that kid, like that's fine if you wanna be all like super big government, like daddy state fucking control everything that we can do with ourselves. That's cool. On this position, I, I am advocating that you do not have enough evidence to warrant overriding no. the every major medical organization that supports transitioning for kids. Well, what about homeless kids? You keep on saying kids are their parents. What about uh, kids without? Should kids, uh, homeless children or kids that are in youth detention centers be able to transition without uh, parental consent or take puberty blockers without parental consent? I think that is a more interesting question. I think there there is more... I would hope that in that scenario, to be fair, I don't actually know how the system, how like a child penitentiary system works. I would hope that in that situation that a medical professional is doing their due diligence in making sure that that kid qualifies with all of the symptoms. You and, said parents, so, so the parent doesn't need to be involved? Okay, you asked me about a scenario where there's no parents, so I'm conveying what I think would happen in a situation where there were no parents. Okay. 
if there were no parents involved, I would hope that the medical professional involved would do their very best to follow the diagnostic criteria, which have an overwhelmingly high rate of success at diagnosis with kids and would do their due diligence in making sure that that kid didn't have any comorbid disorders like eating disorders or like osteoporosis and that they would make sure that they follow the standards of care to a T. Because my understanding is that a lot of people who are in prison aren't getting good health care anyway. So I can't imagine it would be better for kids. But if they were homeless or they were kids, I don't think you necessarily need a parent. I would hope they would have a guardian or someone around that could That's not like, how it help works. them go through the... Well, how does it work? I, I In I reality, know. how does it work? How does homeless being work? You, that, if you're homeless, you don't have a guardian or a parent to go to gender, gender reassignment surgery with you. Okay. That's how it works. Well, cool. Then I would hope that we would have... Well, I feel like, if anything, this is the case for socialized medicine. To get these... I, I would hope that if these people showed up to a doctor, a specialist, and they were like, hey, I think I'm gender dysphoric. I don't have a place to live. That, like, this doctor would be like, okay, not only my they should be giving these kids resources i don't fucking know how to help their homelessness i'm not a professional in homeless i know but i'm just saying should they without a parent they should be able to a, a child should be able to choose on its own at 10 years old or 11 years old without a parent to take puberty blockers because you said multiple times with a parent what about I a homeless think there's kid many situations where there are homeless kids wandering there into are the there clinic? are as a matter of fact there's actually a program that helps uh homeless youth transition okay there's but actually, i think a lot of those homeless youth aren't like nine or ten yeah, but right. but there, I'm saying, but there is, there are charities that do help homeless children transition without sure. any sort and of. And if parent. they don't have, well, I think if they're 16 or older, they definitely should be able to decide for themselves. If they don't have a parent or guardian or anything like that before 16, then absolutely, I think if the doctor there does a thorough job with their diagnostic process, then yeah, they should absolutely be allowed to have medicine. I disagree. Okay, but uh, uh, there's just a lot of words. No too, basis, but, uh, just yeah, well, I, I know, but no, you're like the parents should be there, and now you're saying the parents don't have to be there. So you no, know, you don't, don't, don't there's no integrity. Wait, no. Yeah, stop, okay, but well, stop. this is my question. No, 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 the no, diagnostic no, no. tool. Stop. Well, Alex, you just said stop. a parent needs to be Alex, there, and now a parent stop. doesn't need to be stop there. So stop what am I? Right now, you are misrepresenting me so fucking hard. You asked me a specific situation. Okay, parents should be there. I think we both agree parents should probably be involved, right? In a specific situation where there aren't parents, if I give you an answer, you ask me in a specific situation where parents or guardians aren't involved, what should happen? And I give you an answer. You don't get to fucking turn around and be like, oh, see, huh? you don't think parents should be involved. That's not what I said. I specifically said parents should be involved. You asked me specifically. Yeah, but so kids without parents still, still get it. Oh my it. God. You can't, you can't like ask me a hypothetical and then act like my But you can't have it both ways. But you're having it both ways. You're saying a parent should be and the kids without parents can transition. Oh my God, is this that bothered. hard to understand? If parents can be involved, parents absolutely need to be involved. If there are no parents or guardians to speak of, should that kid be allowed to have medicine? Yes, that kid should be allowed to have medicine. You're saying like it's a life-saving medicine. You know that you said that the bone density yeah. issue. We're yeah, talking but the kid, about quality but of you're, life. You're, you know, yeah, but quality of life. So, so, so I'm saying if you take a puberty blockers and your bones are less dense when you're older, you're more susceptible to injury. Is that fact or is that false? Not if – so the, the bone – With less density, dense bones. So, okay, yeah, let's talk about bone density real quick. We've let's talk about, about bone density. Okay, bone so – so, density is only an issue when you are on – the hormone blocking drug. If you are on cross sex hormones or if you stop using the drug, the research shows that your uh your peak bone mass is the same as your is your counterpart so, who don't use the drug. So a medicine that if you got in a car accident would make you more susceptible to dying in a car accident because if you're... you were on Lupron against the standards of care for 32 years, then yes, you would have brittle little toothpick bones. And if you got in a car crash, you would fall apart like a paper mache doll. But literally nobody. So that's medicine. That... Nobody is in that situation because medicine would tell you to stop taking that drug after two years of use or to at, uh, to take the, the drug concurrently with cross-sex hormones, which would alleviate the risk of bone mass. I just think it's irreversible. But I mean, I've you really have enjoyed it. basis, though. You can keep saying- Arden, I, I have basis. There's multiple stories. There's so many stories, stories of people- Stories don't matter with yes, data. Yes, there are people. I don't need the data when I have a real person that said their penis stopped growing. That's all I need to hear. Okay, because so that, you notice how embarrassing that is? You notice how embarrassing that is to go- fine. Yeah. Arden, that's all the facts. You can look at some fake study done by some school that's probably owned and bought and sold fake by some studies. pharmaceutical company. Okay, so yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Study altogether. No, what I'm saying, mean? it's done by some university that's trying to do some social agenda. There, there's something behind it. That are done by 
by medical by university? some by some college university yeah i mean i don't think that they, when they take a small sample size i don't think that uh, counts for the seven so and a half billion people American on earth well, when, when, you, when, you, when you when you when you when you do a sample size of twenty seven thousand, that doesn't represent the whole world yeah those places are about gender because if you don't realize that there is They're a not, movement it's about child and adolescent psychology what are you fucking talking about and one of the most important things are kids with gender dysphoria that's probably one that's of the main true. things are there are that's so not that's not a that's not an important films. issue. That's not a real that's not an important psychiatric issue. I didn't issue say that that's not important. You said that's the most important. I don't I don't put a value over trans kids. Over I think kids that is one of the most mental, mental most illness. important mental health issues that should deal with kids is gender dysphoria. I don't think same with the eating important. disorders. I think they're all important. They can I don't have a pie with limited slices to dish out of empathy. I can say, oh, that's also important. I care about that as well. You're acting like there's a like a an empathy resource well and like if we and most of it's going to the trans kids and like that it should be that no i care about all kids who are struggling i want all kids to be well and so i'm yeah. going by what the data says is the best for this specific for you population of children well, I think we're just going to have to agree to disagree that they're not irreversible. I can agree I that know. we do disagree, but I also say you're completely wrong and not based on the evidence. Well, I think I'm the one that's more based in reality, but let's just agree okay. to disagree. And that sounds good, guys. With that, it was a good back and forth, and I think we're going to jump into the Q&A section. And if you have a question for Arden or Alex, send them into the chat. Or let's get those super chats and all right. It's been a nice debate, Arden. I, I, I really appreciate you coming on here and being so gracious and spending your time here. I, I just want to say I hope I have not been disrespectful at all. I don't think you are disrespectful. I wish you cared about the research, but that's fine. And okay, the first super chat from Miss Tree for $5. Alex, can you name a medicine that is natural to take? Can I uh, name a medicine that is natural to take? Uh, like vitamin D? I don't know if that's a medicine, but I mean, I think that's natural to take. You get from the sun. All right, move it along. Top still <laughs> for five pounds. Question for Alex. Have you ever explored or orgasms separate through stimulating your prostate? No pain is is needed. I haven't. I would like to have that happen. I've heard about it. I've not been st stimulated. I would like to be prostate stimulated to ejaculation. Well, six dollars six six cents, but I have not had that happen. And when I do, I'll, I'll blog about it. So check my blog. There, there you go. And all right, from Jupiter Darman for $5. Arden, why do you prefer doctors, studies, science, facts, and evidence over it seems this way to me, individual anecdotes and YouTube vids? Good job tonight. So I think well, for golly gee, I think I care about data because while I think hearing people's individual stories can be really moving, it can definitely move you to care about that individual and what harm they went through. It doesn't necessarily represent a broader phenomenon. And I think as humans, we're pattern seekers. We can be led to think there's a broader phenomenon from a single story. And so I prefer to rely on empirical data and evidence because I think that leads to a more reliable worldview and a you can count on more reliable outcomes that way and i'm the opposite i like to talk to people and hear from the horse's mouth type situation there we go and all right michael a for five dollars stories are anecdotal alex can you provide any statistics or data to back up your claim that puberty blockers are irreversible that isn't anecdotal. 
I mean, there is. There's, there's. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. I mean, steady effects of puberty blockers can last a long time. The UK High Court found, agreed. I mean, there's, there's. If you just a simple Google search, guys, you're gonna have to do your own research. But there is a data that says it's irreversible, and you even admit after two years of use, it's irreversible. So, which no doctor uh, yeah. does for trans kids, by the but way. But what I'm saying is, so I believe even after a year, 18 months is irreversible, in my opinion. No, you don't have evidence for that, but that's okay. You yeah, I do. I have evidence. evidence. I have evidence because I know if you take a pill and it makes your penis penis stop growing that your penis stops growing so that's all the evidence i need that's with the tiny penises man because if i had a tiny penis luckily i have a great ding dong and if i had a tiny one i would be very ill i'd be sick i'd kill myself i've gone on quite a few dates with a guy who has a a small penis before in the past and uh, still knew what to do with it well how can size matter to you you don't you're a size queen i don't it you're the size of your dick shouldn't matter to literally anyone including you that's all i'm saying it does matter to me it's one of the most important things okay go ahead see we're learning today and from crovis crux for five dollars this is so harmful to the trans community can we please stop this this helps literally no one see more uh i think here actually you want to know i actually have something to say for that the reason why i do these debates it's not necessarily because I love coming on here because I think it makes a huge difference. It's because the last few times I was offered to do a debate, uh, somebody, I said no, somebody else did the debate and I thought they did a significantly worse job representing the trans community. These things are gonna happen no matter what. So I think it's nice to show up and represent the position as best you can, but. All right, Jonathan Fuller for $5. Arden, how do you keep calm during this debate. Okay, well, first of all, I love Jonathan. Jonathan's amazing. And I think I, I mean, I argue with people for like, it's kind of what I do. So I don't know, I, 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 was I calm? I feel like I was yelling quite a bit. So I don't know if I was calm, but thank you anyway. You're a delicate flower, Arden. Oh, thank you. And uh, okay, K-Doc with WZ500 says, dude, I'm trying to think how to say this. Oh boy. Size, size, does doth press protest too much? A little sense. bit, yes. That's what I'm saying. You know, what if I told you that I took puberty blockers and then I regretted taking it? I would Does be like, that's up. I hope you have something that you have resources to help you feel better and live your best life. I would My not then be business. like, let's ban medicine. I would. I wish I would have banned it. I would have a bigger dick. But go ahead. From Jernsim from 499, does Arden think that white children who feel they are black should be able to identify as such and take men- meds to change skin color? No, there is no evidence to suggest that being transracial is a thing that exists. And there's definitely no evidence to suggest that taking any sort of skin changing medicine would improve their quality of life. That med- that evidence does exist for trans people. Well, Rachel Dolezal, she, she, her life would have been better if she could have transitioned to black. story, that's not data. Well, it's real you true so story from the horse's the mouth. Stories. I love stories and I am horny. Not for you, but for other stuff. I am horny, yes. And from Charlize Pierce for five dollars, Alex, how large would that one person's phallus have been without puberty blockers? What if their dad also had a small phallus? My dad has the biggest penis I've ever seen in my life, and so I, that doesn't apply to me. He has like the biggest penis I've how ever seen. How many dicks have you seen? I've seen his dick and my dick, so I've seen two dicks. And I oh. saw a porno once. I saw a porno with Ron Jeremy, so I've seen three dicks. All bigger than mine. Oh, I've never God. seen a dick. Yeah, I've never seen a dick smaller than mine. And we're moving along. And if you have your questions, your burning desire questions, now is to send them in for our fun Q&A section. Alex, what if the horse doesn't know what it is talking about yeah that's not horses don't lie that's the first thing a rule of horses they can only tell the truth they're like turtles or elephants they never forget either all right and from 
Andrew Handelsman from CA, $5. Arden, thanks for bringing facts and evidence instead of emotion. Alex, could learn something from you. Uh oh, we're getting both. Ooh. Uh-huh. I did learn Any a lot. Comments? I learned a lot. No, I learned a lot tonight. Mm-hmm. And okay, have another have one coming in right now, but I'll read one or two. Uh, regular question. Where where is James? James, I am actually my I'm Amy Newman sending you all love out there. But James is eating popcorn right now. Uh, and I, I want to say, Amy, you've done a great job as a moderator. You, you, oh, you handled you. it with grace, not too much stress. Uh, you, you've been very professional. I think you handled it excellent in James's uh, uh, absence. Well, thank you so very much. And all right, got another super chat. King TL for $5. Arden, how soon... I think it's, would you tell a guy you are trans if he's bought you a drink and seems interested <laughs> before or after you walk out of the establishment? Uh, so my personal rule is that before anything in the direction of sex happens, I would tell someone. I don't think that that is a moral obligation but I think it is morally preferable, to be honest. You debated this again, and that was Tommy King, my man, one of my favorite callers, and he was in a bar in and Fargo, North Tommy Dakota, King, where man, he was buying shots, callers. and then bought some shots with this girl, then they went outside and they made out, and then later in the night, he, he didn't fight or anything, but she said that she was a uh, uh, trans, which, that's why that was a personal thing. But you, you did have this debate. This is one thing. I don't think it should be legal. Somebody should have to tell their sex, but... What about in the case where somebody gets married and they never have sex? Do you think a person should be obligated to tell their uh, sex if they were born before marriage, at least? So it's kind of a similar thing where I think that you can't demonstrate that. Well, in the case of marriage, I think there's probably a stronger case for uh, needing to be honest. I think honesty as like a when things are getting serious it does have the potential to cause harm dishonesty has the potential to cause harm i think that's the issue um so yeah i think if people were getting married and not having sex first of all i would be concerned well you can't so you're a good christian way. arden aren't you a good christian you don't have sex before marriage right? i'm a dirty godlet well actually i don't want you've had sex anymore. before marriage arden oh i'm a huge slut and i am super are you kidding do you oh, do yeah. anal sex what kind of sex do you do I don't. We don't need to discuss what kind of sex. Well, is it vaginal sex? sex? You don't have a vagina, right? Oh so do you do God. anal? And so we have a super chat for nine ninety nine <laughs> from Super K Pill. Kids often have no idea what they want. We should be very, very careful about giving them drugs that can cause irreversible damage. That's for this, you, Arden. I. This is what we've been talking about the whole time. Yeah, kids don't often know what they want. That's the whole point of having a medicine like Lupron so that these kids can have the time to say, Jesus Christ, am I trans? Do I really want to go through with hormones? Like, I don't know. Um, so that, that's the whole fucking point of Lupron is having a reversible drug where people can stall puberty. It's not irreversible, though, Arden. You keep saying that. It's not. You admit that at 23 I agree. It's months, not irreversible. It could... That's true. It's reversible. Thank you for- You know what I mean. You know what I mean, Arden. Let's not splitting hairs. We're not here to circumcise an ant. I'm just saying, if you take puberty blockers for 23 months, 18 months, even a year, it can have damage that is not fixable. That's my that's my point. I'm sticking that's with it. not true, and you don't have- uh, It is true. I do have evidence, because I have guys with small penises that I've talked to, so. And I have a small uh, penis myself, so. Michael, for $5, <laughs> says- <laughs> Sounds like uh, Alex is overcompensating for something a bit. Just saying. I'm under. I'm undercompensating. I don't have enough. I've, uh, I'm undercompensating. I wish I had a bigger thing. I need more. If you guys have some extra out there, I'll take it. If I could strap it on, I would. I don't. I only have my one tool. I got to play with the, the hand I'm dealt. And guess what? I'm a good poker player. Hey, $5 donation. Okay, go ahead. Next question. 
And the we got another two coming in, but I'll read a normal question in the meantime. So from UKP, the child can have irreversible psychological damage if not given a way out of prolonged torment. Like started one way, went the other, I'm not sure. Child can have irreversible psychological damage if not given away at a prolonged torment. I think that's actually for Alex. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think you can have damage. You can have uh, mental health issues that have nothing to do with your gender. You can have gender dysphoria where you think you're in the opposite sex. You can, you know, transition and then get looked at by your peers in a weird way and then change your mind and, and have a social stigma behind it. I think that's all possible. But I think that is limited when you don't give children puberty blockers. All those uh, social stigmas and mental health aspects are reduced if you don't give children puberty blockers, in my opinion. And moving right along. Corvus Crux for $5. Arden, this was less about you and more about the toxic environment in chat and Alex being Alex. He's not here for a good faith argument. That's what they always say. I don't know how I'm not here for good faith, but that's what they always want to say. I can tell you why, but I feel like we've gone through it so many times, it's not really worth the breath, so. And Converse Non-Believer for 25. Both guessed if the evidence of your belief about blockers was proved wrong, what would that mean to you? Well, to me, even if it was even if it was reversible, I'd like to get your opinion, Arden. But even if it was reversible, I, I still wouldn't recommend a child choosing their sex for gender dysphoria at nine years old or choosing to take puberty wait, blockers. Wait, 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 wait! I, I have to hone in on this. You're telling me that even if it could be proven to your satisfaction that it was reversible and completely safe, you would still object to it. Well, because I don't think it'd be completely safe mentally. Like, I think there'd still be a social stigma behind it. That's insane, dude. Do you realize? Why? Because I understand social sciences and there'd be a social stigma behind it. No, you don't if you're saying that. Like, I follow the You don't think, as a trans person, you'd have to know there's a social stigma behind it. So I'm saying, even if you take the medicine, that even if it doesn't affect you physically, uh, physiologically or whatever, it still affects you socially. So I still don't think a kid is able to make that social decision at nine years old, regardless of their health. evidence could demonstrate to you sufficient I'm saying regardless of their health, I still don't think a nine-year-old is, is able to make that decision. Like, well, I'm not being dishonest. I'm just saying I don't think a kid is able to make that decision, even if I it is re- irreversible. But honest. the fact that the medicine isn't reversible is is a staunch reason why we shouldn't give it because it's not healthy. It doesn't benefit the person's health. But even if that wasn't the case, I still don't think that a child at nine years old should transition because I don't think socially they understand the uh, consequences okay. that are going to okay. come with taking puberty blockers at that age, even Can if physically you- it doesn't affect them. Can I show you what an honest debater does? If the evidence what? suggested my position was wrong, I would say I was wrong and I would change my position. Thank you. I'm still anti-puberty blockers, even whether it whether it hurts them physically or not. I'm saying it, it, it hurts you physically, socially, okay. mentally, emotionally. It. It, it's it's it. all around. You're, you're just taking it's one part of it. There's, there's, you have no, no, you don't no just take an apple in one bite. There's multiple bites to the apple. Arden. And all right. Donuts for five pounds. <gasps> Alex... So what kind of car do you drive? I'm sure it's super big and expensive, compensating for something. Disrespectful ass. Great job, Arden. I think. Oh, I agree. Great, that. great job, Arden. I drive a 2010 Hyundai Elantra. It gets 36 miles to the gallon. The thing doesn't even burn any gas. I'm saving the environment because I'm sure you guys believe climate change is real. I don't. Um, but oh, I do it. Jesus. I do it. I Christ. do it for you. What? I do it for you, Arden, because I want you to be able to have all that sex you're talking about earlier. I don't want the planet to be underwater because I know you're trying to get laid. And uh, two dollars from Endo after show, Amy. I am just modding tonight. But if any of you out there have an after show, feel free to send it in, and we will link it in the description. Woo-hoo. All right, moving the light along. Will Stewart, hey Will from TFC Rams for four ninety nine. Has Alex has Alex ever not done a debate drunk? I don't drink. It's funny. I'm sober. I don't even drink. I haven't drank. One of my best friends died three years ago. I stopped drinking alcohol. 
Totally sober, if you can believe that. And okay, Great Sky, fifty dollars. The big five zero. With all this talk about penises, I think Alex has shown, without a doubt, that he is the biggest dick in the room. I don't know. I don't know. True. Maybe. I mean, probably. I don't know. I I wish I didn't take those puberty blockers. I'll tell you that much. Got another one coming in right now. But while that's coming in, I'll ask from Toto Kaka. At what age is it okay to do that? I'm not sure what the question in context is. If that's for me, I, 17 to be the earliest age, and I still think that's a little early. But, I mean, I could see leg legality, why legally, maybe even 16 in some circumstances. The evidence would suggest that Tanner stage 2 or 3 of puberty, so anywhere from 9 to 13 years old, is the most ideal time to have the best outcomes and not being on that medicine any longer than two years and then transitioning to either complete cessation or concurrent use with hormones. Yeah, if a nine-year-old can't drive a car, they shouldn't be able to choose what kind of medicine they take to make their penis stop growing. Never give nine-year-olds medicine. If they have cancer, fuck them. They can't and drive not, a car. And it's not medicine. It makes their bones. It's 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 anti-medicine it because it makes medicine. their bones it's weak and it makes their penis medicine. stop growing. Yeah, that's not it's not medicine if it makes you stop producing testosterone. No that's medicine under under sixteen. People. That's not you medicine. That. That's not medicine if it's it makes your penis stop growing because you have so much estrogen. That's not medicine. <laughs> And oh, you okay? Well, just real quick, do you really think puberty blockers are the same as insulin? You really believe that, Arden? Puberty blockers are life saving medicine, yes. You got to be kidding me. You're telling me there's people that would die if they didn't have puberty blockers? People would kill themselves if they didn't have puberty blockers. Oh my god, so that's puberty? the same as that's the same as that's Wait, that's the same as insulin. That's the same the as point? insulin. This is it's proven proven my point how ingenuine you are that you're saying people would kill themselves that it's life saving. Okay, nobody's died. Nobody's died because they didn't get to transition. Are you know you're, how many, now you're not based in reality, wait, wait, wait. sweetheart. You were the one talking about suicide rates and trans people. This is that is high. what I said. Yes, what, this is high. Stop. Holy shit, let me make a fucking point without butting in. This is the point I was making in my opening statement how it's amazing how you have so much empathy for the potential regretters, which the data suggests is an immensely tiny population. You have no empathy for pushing people through the wrong puberty, which is the majority of trans people who would be denied this medicine. If pushing them through the wrong puberty. You mean they're gen, they're they're biological. They're yes, I'm the pushing one that them would through their cause that biological sex. life outcomes. You're concerned that's not, about their that's not true. Rate. How can you prove that it's going to make their life worse? How can you? There's so much prove data that? on the quality of life is worse for people before they have their like either puberty blockers or hormones. That is debatable. If no, I don't it's even not. Want to if yes, you have it evidence, is. if you have yes, evidence, but, I'll or the fact that you, the fact but that the you can, you say, you say, evidence. you, you say, puberty blockers are the same as insulin, and they're both life-saving drugs. That just shows you you know nothing about medicine, Arden, and you're way out of your league. That's Dude. what I'm saying. All right, sure, whatever you fucking say. Ten dollars from Matt Dillahunty. Hi, Matt. Alex, do you realize you can respond to Arden gendering her properly without the casual sexism of honey, sweetie, my sweet angel, because it's pretty gross. Also, sorry about your penis. Well, uh, first of all, that's how I talk to all ladies, and I'm happy that you're sympathetic to my penis. Uh, I wish more ladies were empathetic to my penis size, uh, but, you know, it's just a natural thing that I've had to live with my whole life. Um, but, like I said, you know, uh, a carpenter, you know, learns how to use his tools. I know how to use them, and it's about the motion in the talk ocean. Like so that to all ladies. That's what I'm saying. It's not always about the size of the boat. It's the motion in the ocean. So, you know, I can only be so depressed. But uh, life goes on, right? And, but I'm sending love to both our interlocutors. And five dollars from Michael BCA. Uh, Alex, you said you learned a lot. What did you think is the strongest argument against your position, and what makes it the strongest? The strongest, well, there is no strong argument to my opinion because I'm the strongest debater of all time. There's only weak, sad, little excuse of arguments that their lives are better with a bunch of fake data. So that's the answer. All right. Can Dex. we just point out, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, Amy, sure. I don't want to, I, I, I just want to point out that they asked 
what the most con he said he learned a lot. They asked what the most convincing <laughs> argument was. Oh yeah, okay. What, what did I learn? Answer. He what did I learn? Just what did I? What did I learn? I learned that if you take uh, puberty blockers for over 24 months and a doctor, you know, misdiagnoses you and you get in a car accident and your bones will break like glass. I learned that. You said that. So I learned that. That's the most important thing I learned. That's, yeah, for sure. All right. Four ninety nine from the Dexter Morgan himself. My gosh. For both, what's suicide slash depression rate in pre slash post-op or blockers? Okay, what is the suicide depression rate in pre or post-op blockers? What's the percent of adults that regret changing themselves once their brains matured? It's kind of like two uh, questions in, in one. She knows all the stats. She says there's very little. I think the stat's much higher, but that's just you have to do your so own independent the, the investigation. The regret rate stat? Uh if you actually want, if you follow me on Twitter, I'd be happy to share with you uh, all the resources I was using for tonight. Um, there are There is data out there on what like the suicide rates are before and after, and I'd be happy to comb through that for you and get you those actual numbers. I, I don't have those off the cuff, but I know exactly where to get them, so it should take me like maybe an hour to pull all that together. All right, that sounds good. And $2 from Intraspecies. Does Alex prioritize anecdotes over empirical data? Uh, not necessarily anecdotes, but I mean, word of mouth. I mean, real stories, stuff that I can touch and feel from my... No, listen, it's not an anecdote if I can touch and feel it with my hands and I can hear it from the horse's mouth. You want an anecdote? Arden, you have, have a an... bunch of fake, Actually... you have a bunch of fake data, Arden. You're laughing oh, like you have a bunch you of fake anecdote. data. I thought you like anecdotes. I, I love anecdotes. Anecdote. Give me one, please, yeah, babe. So you know how Come I, on, hit I me with your best that, that research that said 8% detransition at some point, 60% retransition, and only 4 percent for regret? Fake. Oh, oh, you. How many transitions you, are they going to do? Oh, They're going to transition, detransition, transition back. Chill, how many transitions chill, are we going to go? Chill, how many boy, transitions chill are we going to have? Chill, chill, big guy. I was going to give you an anecdote. I didn't even get it out before you had okay, to. Like, I know, but how many transitions? Most actually repressed. You did like a, like, okay. You think I'm sexually repressed? Is that why? Is that, I, that's no, why I'm not say? Please, can I please give you my anecdote? I was, I well, feel my sexual up. repression. Oh my god! I gave you that data because I was trying to point out that I actually know someone who is detransitioned and retransitioned. You know who she is? You're looking at her. Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, see, you changed your mind too. Yeah, and I went back because that's what. But you had to go back because your penis was all small. That's why, Arden. No. That's why. Yes, that's I why. bet that's why you had weird penis syndrome. You're thinking a lot about my penis, but okay, if that's what's on your mind, I have. Well, why? Well, then, what well, well, I'm saying. So you went back to a man, and then you realize I want to go back to a female. You're a very lovely lady. I'm not saying you're not a lady. I'm just saying you changed your mind. I mean, you still had some sort of doubt. Yes, and you know that's what I mean? concurrent with the data that I showed you. That, well, that a lot of people have data. that doubt. Is what I'm trying to say. So I don't want them to make irreversible damage to their body because they still are. You know, you're the one. Debatable. Your position was what will give them irreversible da damage that they'll regret. But. And five dollars from King T.L. Arden. Thanks for the honesty. And yes, Alex told the true tale of what happened to me once. Oh, comment. King T.L. Yeah. Another five dollars. Arden, Alex, yes. 99 is genuine. He's a good man. And true peace and respect for all. That's a fan of mine. Thank you, Tommy. And five dollars from Miss Tree, Alex. If you get a transplanted, hold on one sec. From a trans woman, Alex. If you get a transplanted from a trans woman with a bigger Johnson, would you support her removing it? Okay, for that, yes, yes. Selfishly, yes. If somebody's going to donate their bigger penis to me and they're not using it. In that case, I do recommend puberty blockers. Not to children, not to children, but to adults. Uh, but yes, if they do want to donate a bigger penis to me, go to conspiracycastle.live, and uh, there's a contact page. I'm, will, I'm taking all penis donations. There you have it, folks. Not a chump for $5. Should a child with body integrity disorder, condition where you feel a limb is not really yours, quotes, be able to get surgery to remove, say, an arm? 
this question is 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 a little more complicated than being trans, right? Because like, if you're trans and you get a surgery, like genital surgery, you don't need like a caretaker. You can just go on with your life. But if you get like a limb removed, you might need someone to take care of you. So whether or not that there's a lot more levels to consider when it comes to that sort of thing. However, if so you're saying your arm's less important than your penis, your penis is more important than your arm, Arden. Wait, I don't know how you got that from what I'm saying, but that's well, wait, you're saying you're saying you're I saying that finish my point. Can you let me? Oh, but real quick, but what you're saying there's more levels to decide no, to cut off your Alex, arm than is to cut off your Alex, penis. You only have Alex, one penis, Alex. Oh my god, you only have you have two arms, but you only have one of each. Like, yeah, but it's a bigger deal to cut off your penis than to lose your arm. It's a bigger I, deal disagree completely so you'd rather have your you're you got to be kidding me you got to be kidding me you think it's a you think that that the penis is less important than your I arm like how i didn't even get to my point yet okay go to your point sorry <laughs> god damn if if it was a decision that was supported by evidence all parties were in agreement and the doctor agreed that this person would probably cut off their limb if i didn't do this safely and all parties were in agreement it was supported by the evidence, best option for out the best possible outcome for this patient, then yeah, I would support that professional making that decision. Um, Crovis Crux for $5. Alex, what about young girls that require Depot Provera? It causes similar bone density loss. It helps manage endometriosis and PCOS. So you're talking about uh, the transition drug. It also helps men with pancreatic cancer uh, create less testosterone so they have less tumors. So, yeah, I mean, are there applications that are beneficial of these drugs to be used? Yes, but the application to stop your penis from growing uh, is not the proper application of these medicines. I just can I point out really quickly? He disagreed that there are applications for these medicines that yeah, not provide for good from- outcomes. So, no, but they take thing. no adults. They give adults puberty blockers with with uh, cancer in their uh, you know whatever pancreatic cancer because it stops the tumors because it makes their body create more estrogen. That's one of the medical uses of the drug. I made my point. Well, that's an application I approve of. I don't approve of for nine year olds to make their penis stop growing. Medicine is what Alex approves. Medicine for the right application. It's the same reason you can't take ivermectin or whatever. I mean, there's a, it's a you know it's not approved. Topo Tessel for five pounds. Alex, you are against medicine for nine-year-olds that make a penis smaller. Do you support Viagra for nine-year-olds as it makes the penis bigger? No, I don't think nine-year-olds should take Viagra. Move. There we go, folks. Torben Hamilton for five dollars. Alex, did you know that epinephrine is a hormone drug? Should children in anaphylaxis be denied epinephrine? No, epinephrine, people need it. So, no, that's different than transition surgery. I mean, a puberty blocker. So we're comparing apples and oranges. So. No, people need it. <laughs> epinephrine? Some people need epinephrine. I take a hit every once in a while just to feel, just to kind of wake up in the morning. Got one or two more coming in. I'll ask a nor uh, from Todu Kaka. What is acceptable? Wow! And I, somebody sent me a hundred dollar donation. Wow, Jay Wams, thank you. Oh, wow, there you that's, go. Uh, that's insane. Wow, I'm rich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what is acceptable as sex change? Is that for me? Transition can be a sure. lot of things. What yeah, but this is this is a good question because I like the show RuPaul's Drag Race, and so I'm saying like I'm pro drag. That's not transitioning. Well, I'm saying that's no, not a transition. Not so transition. what? That's what I'm saying is what is the transition when you decide that I'm going to live as this uh, permanently? I'm saying because you know what is what is considered the different. Def, what I'm trying to say is what is the difference between drag and then when full transition? In your opinion, there's, this is a serious question. So there's different answers to this. Like, what is sex change? Are we talking legal? Like legality, it varies by state and country. Like some states, it's you have to have, you might not have to necessarily have any medical intervention because you might have some sort of pre existing condition that prevents you from getting those medical interventions. But if you had like a several therapists and a doctor say, despite that, this person is in fact trans and deserves to be recognized legally as the gender they identify as, then that's 
sex change is sufficient. Some countries you're required to uh, be fucking um, to to have like a what do you call it? Where you have like your ovaries removed or your testicles removed? What is that? Sterilized. You have to be sterilized in some countries in order to be re legally recognized. But also, what is sex? I have boobs, long hair, ass. Like, does that is it useful to call me a male at that point? Like. I don't know. I feel like that term ceases a lot of utility there. Is that a sex change? Like it's it's complicated. There's so many different things going on in terms of like a sex change. Um, it, you really have to specify like legal, physical, whatever. All it's right. a complicated Thanks, subject. And Jonathan Fuller for five dollars. You like anecdotes, right, Alex? My sister is dead. And not getting to pu publicly safely transition is the underlying cause. I'm sure there's, I'm not saying that people haven't ever committed suicide because they couldn't transition. I just think more people commit suicide because they either decided to transition. Cool, prove it. And then prove it with mind. evidence. Well, there is, there is evidence. You can look at Stories it on Stories aren't evidence. I don't, I mean, I don't think these are people who are lying. That's just what I'm saying. These I never said they were lying. And five dollars from Suddy Side Ramsey. Alex, define anecdote. Listen, I didn't come on here to define anecdote. And honestly, I, I wouldn't know anecdote if I if it hit me in the face. I've never no, I'm kidding. I say like anecdotal evidence. Like if you eat, you know, chicken and broccoli, you'll gain muscle in the gym. It's not necessarily proven, you know, it's just kinda like, you know, anecdotal, like chicken soup for the soul. Um but yeah, I I I, I do a lot of anecdotal anecdotal stuff, but I think there are a lot of solutions to problems with anecdotal solutions. I know that sounds crazy, but I honestly believe big pharma is a machine that is a capitalist pig and that it is owned by multinational corporations that don't have a soul. So they're not uh, worried about actually keeping us healthy, that they want to keep us perpetually sick. So the idea that big pharma likes somebody that has to go on puberty blockers and has to go on transitional surgery, so they will be uh, leaning on big pharma for the rest of their life. So it just feeds into their funnel of more money and more control. So, you know, I look at it like the aspect That's of um, anti-big pharma. No, I can't just let that be said without having it challenged. I, I, I hope the audience does not take that. People don't choose to be trans like people are like this is just like any other no 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 no, 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 I'm not saying you did. I'm not saying you did. I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying that lots of people have lifelong conditions that require them to be on medicine. Nobody chooses this shit. Do I think there are people who benefit from it and that they will maliciously take advantage of those people? Absolutely. That doesn't mean hormone blockers are the problem. And dollar ninety nine from Will Stewart. Does Alex get mistaken as Charlie Kirk? I'm a little thicker than Charlie. No, everybody thinks I'm right wing. I'm not. I'm not some conservative like him. I'm not, I don't. I don't vibe with him. I like. I think. I think another thing. Medicine should be socialized. I don't think insulin should be two hundred dollars here and two dollars in Mexico. It doesn't make sense. We agree there. And from see, we found common ground tonight, guys. G. G. J. M. P. T. W. J. J. M. Patwa. Five dollars. If a child starts blockers at nine and stops at 11, what happens after? Good question, actually. So it depends if you're uh, assigned female at birth and you are transitioning to be like male or like masculine or whatever, um, you what would happen is they would start concurrently introducing testosterone into your system at the same time as using the hormone blocker and that alleviates any issues with bone mineral density. Um, and they would do that specifically because if they put you right on testosterone, you would have the testosterone levels of like an 18 year old guy at 11. And that obviously is not desirable for a kid. So they would uh, do like a dual use. There are sometimes other options that they can use to get them to like 16. And the same thing would happen for someone transitioning from male to female. Mm -hmm. And all right. And I think this is the last question, unless anyone has more, but fast and easy 2010, for five dollars, I went from against hormone blockers to kids to conclude that Alex lost the debate. I'm no longer against the idea. <laughs> well done. This was mm, very informative, fair. but I want—I feel like he at least has to respond because that's for you, Alex. 
Well, that's fake. That's obviously somebody on Arden's side. Anybody that, that sits here tonight and wants to give their kids irreversible puberty blockers at the age of nine is not based in reality. And it's just trying to virtue signal for their own uh, social justice, uh, you know, cause. Cope harder. Cope harder. <laughs> And all right, everyone, I'm looking through chat. I think that is it, which means Arden of Eden and Alex Stein are listed in the descriptions below. If you're like, hmm, I really liked what I heard today, you can go find them. But with that, I think I'll just hand it to each of you to give your final piece, and we will go out. Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, thanks for having me. I, you know, despite the fact that I get heated and I will definitely yell and tell you you're stupid and you're wrong, I don't hate you. I actually think I have more respect for people who can sit there and argue like that with me and not come away thinking I hate them. Uh, I uh, hope that I convince you that, well, maybe you aren't like ready to go give puberty blockers to trans kids, that there isn't actually a good case against it. And if you're still curious, I really do hope people feel comfortable reaching out to me for evidence. I would love to share my sources with you. I think they're pretty good. I think they're pretty convincing. Um, and if you thought I was super fucking wrong and you want to tell me how wrong I was, you should call into Transatlantic on Saturdays at 5 p.m. Central Time over on the line. Uh, we take calls from anyone on all issues relating to being transgender. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Arden. And I just want to say, Arden, you were very gracious, and Amy, you did a great job as a moderator. And then basically, you know, tonight, I get it, guys. You know, I'm going to be a contrarian. Uh, Arden and I aren't going to agree on everything. I, I think I tried to find some sort of common ground. Still, I don't know if we were able to uh, agree that, you know, the effects of these um, med of this medication is irreversible. But the one thing we did argue is that I don't have data. And I just want to make it clear, guys, they're going to say this whole time, you're going to go back and listen, I don't have data. Just do a simple Google search. There's multiple stories and you can do it on YouTube. You can do it on, on there's just, you can do it by upload date if you do the search. People regretting the transition. There's just lots and lots of stories. So I'm not making this up and I'm not even against transitioning. People can transition all they want. I'm just saying there are a lot of people that change their mind. Arden even said at one point in her life, she changed her mind. So when you're giving people irreversible medication for something that they could potentially change their mind about makes it extremely dangerous. And I think that they should wait till they're a little older to take it. But should people transition? Yes, at an appropriate age, they can transition all they want. And I want to say, I love this debate. I love talking with you guys. And uh, and if you guys want to follow me at the Conspiracy Castle, you can hear me talk about even crazier stuff than this. And uh, I really enjoyed myself. Thank you guys again. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Alex. And Zach, thank you guys both. And we have just completed our debate of puberty blockers for trans kids. I am Amy Newman, and from Modern Day Debate, we are sending you lots of love. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. That was